Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a little seascape that I think you're going to enjoy. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got done. Today I have a smaller canvas than usual because I wanted one that's rectangular and quite long. So I have a 12 inch by 24 inch canvas. You use any size that you like. I just sort of like this for seascapes. And I've covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white and liquid clear mixed together, just a little of each, about half and half, and then I've just covered it, but once again, a very thin coat. So let's just start out and have some fun. We'll start with a little two inch brush. I'm going to a small amount of the Thalo Blue. Just tap a little into the bristles. Notice we pull the paint out very flat so we can just pick up a little bit of it. You go up here in this big pile, you're gonna get a, too much. Just a little, we just want a little and we tap it into the bristles. That helps assure a nice even distribution of color all the way through it. Okay, let's go up in here. Now then, just making little X's, little crisscross strokes. Let's just put in a happy little sky. Just something like so. All the way across. There. About like that. Doesn't much matter, wherever you want it. That's exactly where it should be. So we'll come down to about there. All right. And that's about enough, right there. Okay, now we get to wash the brush already. As you know, that's my favorite part of the whole painting procedure, is just washing the brush. And shake it off, and <laughs> we just create one big mess. Oh, that's fun, it really is. I'm gonna go right into titanium white. I'm just tapping the brush right into just straight titanium white. I'll put the indication here, uh, some little floater clouds that just live here. Isn't life wonderful? There we go. We have such a good time making these shows here. We've been making television here at the same studio now for well over 10 years, and, and these people have become very special friends to me. It's like coming home. There we are. Something about like that. And then we'll just sort of fluff them up a little bit. And go across. And that'll give us a little cloud wee back in the distance. And, 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 let me find my knife. We'll take a little lizard crimson, a little phthalo blue, mix it together. I want to make a lavender color, but sort of to the reddish side. There we are. Okay, wipe off the old knife. And shoot. I brush it in too dirty. Maybe we can continue to use it, and I'll just go right in that color. And maybe we have some indications of some little little lavender clouds that are right at the waterline. And we can just throw in some happy little things, wherever you want them. Wherever, wherever, doesn't matter. Something about like that. There, we just let them maybe just float right on out to nothing over there. Oh, there's a big one. That happens sometime. There we go. And right on out. Then we'll fluff it, lift it, blend it, like that. And that'll give us the indication of some little clouds that live far, far away. And that's all we're looking for right now. It's just indications. There. All right. That's simple. Isn't that a fantastic way of making a very colorful little sky that's effective? All right, we get to wash the brush again. Shake off that paint thinner. <laughs> Just cover everybody in the studio. All right, you can blend that a little if you want to, but we're not gonna spend much time on the sky. I wanna work more on the water today. Let's take, let's take. Oh, we'll go right into some phthalo blue. I like phthalo blue. A Little bit of black, just mix them together. And be right back, I'm gonna get a little crimson. So we have phthalo blue, black, and crimson. There, and let's figure out Basically here, maybe, let's see, where we want our water line to be. I know that's probably not real straight. There. When you're painting, it's better to sort of step back and, and take a look-see. Sometimes when you're standing as close as I am here, it's very hard to tell if a line's straight, crooked, or in between. But let's say that's halfway straight. I had a little more crimson right here on the edges. I want a little more crimson right there. 
something about like that. Maybe on both sides. In your world, you decide. Now, you're probably wondering why I put the liquid clear with the, with the liquid white. Because when I did this, I didn't want it to turn light blue. I wanted it to stay quite dark. And if I had put liquid white only on there, as you know, it would have got much lighter in value. And I don't want that. I want it to stay quite dark. It makes it easier. There. All right. And we'll just bring that down to mm, somewhere in there. It doesn't matter. You make the big decisions where all these things live in your world. There we go. Okay, let me just grab another brush so I don't have to waste all my time just cleaning. And I only pick up some of that lavender color that we made. That was alizarin and crimson and, and a little bit of the thalo blue mixed together. And maybe right in here. Ooh, isn't that a pretty color? We'll just add a little bit of that. Thought we'd just do a little seascape today that's very colorful. And I, I have a confession to make. People are always ask me, where do you get ideas for your paintings? When I was over in New Smyrna Beach the other day at, at my partner Annette's shop, she's got a little shop over there, and she was teaching this painting to some of her students, and I just fell in love with it. And I asked her for permission to, to show it to you on the program. So, Annette, thanks. I owe you one. There we go. And I probably won't do near as good a job on it as she does, but this is basically the way she does it. So we'll try it. Wash the brush again. If nothing else, we're gonna get a lot of practice washing the brush. Okay, we're ready. Let's find, oh, we'll just use a little fan brush. It doesn't matter. One of the things I like to do when I do seascapes is figure out where my major wave is gonna be and then just take a little, you can use a filbert, or it doesn't matter, fan brush, whatever. And I just want to basically indicate in here where I think the major wave is going to live. And in my world, I think it's going to go right out through here and maybe crash over right there, and it'll just disappear. How's that? Nice, simple little painting. There we are. Okay. Now, go back into my white. Still using the same little fan brush. And maybe back in here, going straight in and just giving it a wiggle. Maybe there's a little, little splasher that lives back here in the background somewhere. Straight in and just make it wiggle up and down. See there? And that's all there is to it. Something about like that. And we can put the indication here and there and there and here. Just some little doers that live back here far away. There we are. A little more of the white. Strengthen that one a little. Yeah. It's a little closer. Okay. Something about like so. See, Annette does a lot of gorgeous paintings. I think her, her most fantastic thing is flowers. She does some of the most gorgeous flowers I've ever seen. I'm, I'm gonna get her on the show here one day, sooner or later, and get her to paint a flower for you. I think you'll be amazed. I'm not a very good flower painter, but she is dynamite, dynamite. We'll talk her into it. I'm gonna take a little yellow ochre and a little white. A little yellow ochre and white, like that. Just make me a nice little, sort of a gold color. And let's go up in here. This is gonna be our little wave. Let's put a little, a little bit of that color right in here. Like so, something like that. Now, we'll get a little blender brush and just begin blending that. Blend it, blend it, blend it. Now, you can do this several times to achieve a desired lightness if you want to. It's up to you, you decide. You decide, wherever you want it. But see, that blender brush just makes that soft as silk. Just so tender, so soft. There we go. Something about like that. Okay. Now, if you wanted to make it a little brighter, we'll just do it. Let me just pick up a little more of that same color. Same color. And maybe right in here we'll have it a little brighter. And just sort of smoosh it in, as Steve says. I don't know if that's a word or not, but when he uses it, everybody knows what he means. There we go. 
something about my kin. All right. And begin thinking about shape here. Okay. Now then, let's take, I have several little fan, I'm using number three fan brushes today, but it doesn't matter, you use three or six, whatever you have. Take a little dark color. This is just some black and some blue, a little crimson in it. And let's take, and I want to make this wave sort of crash over right here. Now the only way to make that dark right there stand out, we're going to put a little light right behind it. But I want to lay that in first, get an idea where it's at. Go back to my fan brush that has some of the lighter color in it. And let's come right behind it. And then gently blend that back. Thinking about how the wave goes up. Just need a little light area in there to make that rascal show up. See, here it comes. Here it comes, watch. This is one of the nicest little seascapes. And it works very well, very well. There. Now then. Okay, I'll show you a little trick here. Take a little bit of dark color on a filbert. About like so. And we can go up in here and see this little wave right here, this little crasher, you can push right up into there and just form it. That easy. That easy. Isn't that neat? It's another little trick Annette showed me. And it works very well. See, now it just makes a nice dark bottom. And it works that easy. Same thing over in here. Put a little dark right in there. And we'll come back and put a little light and some foam on there, and that'll show up so nice. So nice. And we can put our foam in, well, tell you what, we can just use a little filbert, or you can use a fan brush, it doesn't matter. I picked up a filbert, so we'll use it. And let's go in here and think about some happy little splashes living right up here on top of this. Like so. Now I've picked up some blue, and I'm going to let that be the shadow as we come up in here. There we are. Okay, now wipe off the brush. Pick up a little bit of clean white. And we can highlight that. Just think about water crashing, smashing, having a good time up in here. There. All right. I like to paint water. I don't do it a lot, but I do like to paint it. I was born in Daytona Beach, Florida, which is one of the most fantastic beaches in the world. There. Now then, let's take our little script liner brush, take a little light blue, we'll use a little white. Paint thinner, put a little bit of color on the brush. And we can go up in here and we can begin putting in all kinds of little doers that live up in just begin applying them. There. And let these little foam patterns just work our way on out. Wherever you want them to go. Right up on top of that wave. Okay. A little more of the dark color. And I want to put a little dark edge right there. Just we'll make that stand right out. Let that little rascal crash over it. Some little things coming through there. Just take your time and play with these. They're a lot of fun. You can really just move the water every which way. Okay. Let's, set, let's take the little knife. This is a small knife. I've got a, some white. It's got a small, small amount of blue, just enough to tint it. Cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go up in here. And maybe right in here, and we, we're going to use a lot of pressure. Get in here and, and just... Mm, maybe there's a... See there? Really applying a lot of pressure though. There it goes back somewhere. We don't know where it goes. I'm going to take our little fan brush. It's pretty clean. It doesn't have much on it. And I want to grab that and pull it back. Back, back, back. See? And that creates that illusion right there. That easy. Something about like so. Okay. That works well, let's do another one. What the heck? In our world, there lives another little thing right in there. 
Here it comes. Here it comes. There. See? Just put it wherever you want it. Okay. Grab our little fan brush again. And once again, all you do is just go back with it. Just pull it backwards. There. And that creates all those little things that you want in there. Very simply. Very simply. You don't have to work at it hardly at all. <laughs> and as you know, I'm a very lazy painter. I look for easy ways to do things. All right, let me get back into my liner brush with a little, a little bit of paint that's been thinned with paint thinner. And we'll just put the indication here and there of some, just some little foam patterns. Or something about like that. We're not too worried about it at this point. There, I want to make a little, little highlight right up on top of that so it continues on there. All right, maybe back in here you can just highlight a few of these little rascals. Not going to worry too much about them. But just show some of them. Think about being down at the ocean, watching the waves come in. That's what makes it pretty. All right, tell you what, find a, here's a filbert. Let's go into, let's have a rock. We we'll use some Van Dyke Brown, some dark sienna just mixed together. And maybe in our world there lives right here. Clump. Just drop it in. Big old, big old stone lives right there. Right about here. We put some dark color in first just to make the base of it. And then we'll come back and put a little highlight on it here and there and there and here, wherever you want it. I'm going to pull a little of that color down, just a little. And we will take a two-inch brush, grab it, pull down, something like so, and go across. That'll end up being a little reflection in the water when we get all finished. Okay, let's take some white paint, and we'll get some bright red. Bright red. I'm using the same old dirty filbert. I don't care. It doesn't matter. A little touch of the bright red. Not much. Not much. And now let's just sort of... Let's just sort of highlight our stone. Just let a little color play through here. There we go. See there? Just sort of play them back and forth, dark and light. And you can actually sculpt this stone doing that. There. See there? Think about where all these little things would live. Mm. That easy. You can make it right in there. Something like so. We go back to our, our small knife, a little bit of the white on it. And let's just put a little indication, a little water floating right around the bottom. And maybe, I got it, I got it, I know, I know, I know, watch. Right here, right here, here it comes. Here's another little, little thing that lives right out here. Maybe it comes right on over there somewhere, who knows. Once again, we grab our fan brush, and we just pull that back. That's simple. Look at there. Just pull it back. Like so. And we got all kinds of water here. We can take a filbert brush, take a little bit of that blue and black and crimson color, and we can just go back up in here and punch a few little holes in the surf. Just a few little indications some little dark areas. Makes it pretty. See there? There they are. Just a few. That's easier than trying to paint all the foam is just just to go in there and drop some in. Okay, lost my brush here for a second. Got so many brushes going, I lost one. I'm gonna take a little bit of light blue, thin it down, and I want to put the indication here of maybe just just a little ripple on the surface, a little wet sheen. There we go, something about like that. Just to give a little indication. All right, let's have some fun. Let me grab a fan brush. We're gonna take, we're gonna take a little bit of white. <laughs> I know, lost it this time. 
I think maybe we'll have us a little sand dune lives right out here. Maybe it comes down. I don't know, wherever you want it. But allow it to pick up some of those colors that are underneath. There we go. Just a happy little sand dune. He just stays out here and watches the water all day. Has a good time. Great time. Grab another fan brush, take some sap green, a little bit of the brown color. I'm just gonna mix some colors together on my brush here. Sap green, some of the browns. Let's go up in here and let's just punch in the bottom. It's gonna be the bottom of, I mean, a little more color, of some little weeds that live right in here. There we go. Always got these little things that live there. Okay. Maybe a few little doers in here, down here, I don't know. Just, all we're doing is pushing in some color here. All right. We'll go back and get our liner brush, put some paint thinner on it. And we're gonna begin taking, oh, we can start with a little bit of the green and brown. And I just wanna lift these up, make some little sea oats out here. There we are. See, you just pull that color right on out of there. We'll do some dark color first. We're using green and brown here. Just pull them out. All right, a little more paint thinner. If your paint won't flow, add more paint thinner to it. There we go. And we'll do a little on this one and the next one and whatever. Take your brush and you can literally grab a little bit of that base color and let it become the shadows. See there, just let it mix right in there. It's all right, it's all right. That'll become your shadows, that green and brown. Makes nice little shadows there. But don't want to kill all those nice colors you picked up from underneath. They become your good friend. Now, put all these little rascals in. All right, wherever. I'm gonna go in now to yellow ochre. And just pop some right over the top of it. Now, when you're at home and you have unlimited time, you can really play with these and put all kinds of gorgeous things. Here, if I go over 30 minutes, I got a mean old director. She has no sense of humor at all, but that's okay. We'll just put something in here real quick. And sometimes there's little things out here on the end. It's up to you. Now, no little seascape would be complete without a happy little palm tree in it. So we'll just use the fan brush, go into some Van Dyke brown, a little black. Just have a little dark color to make his trunk. And he lives in our world. He lives right there. Let's put a little crook down at the bottom. Old palm trees have a tendency to sort of get bent on the end there. Something about like that. Now dip the brush into a little bit of paint thinner. Still using brown and black. I want to thin the paint just a little, not a lot, just a little. And let's put in just some basic ideas here. Choo, choo, choo. I have some little leaves on this palm tree. There they go. Wherever, wherever. Maybe there's one down here. I want to have one that's coming right toward me. So we'll just sort of hang him out there like that. Here's one behind him. There's a nice little one. Okay, I'm take a little bit of a little bit of brown and white. Just want to touch this edge just a little. And I'm gonna take a fan brush and grab that and pull it around so it makes the trunk look round. All right. Take a little touch of yellow and green mixed together, and let's just take and highlight these. Just a little, just a little. There, here we go, something about like that. Shoot with that, we've about got a little palm tree. But I wanted that limb to look like it comes right straight out toward me. You can use a liner brush, make a lot more detail, okay? Thank with that, we'll call this little painting finished. Hope you've enjoyed it. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friends.